you know, we go beyond contract opportunities to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to help small businesses get from the idea phase to capable of working on a project like this. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Wall Street. Black Wall Street. And now, here's your host, Blair Durham. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the 106th edition of Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. Super excited to share with you all. Today's show focuses on transportation and innovation in the age of COVID. COVID-19. And I'm so excited to introduce our first guest. He's actually no stranger to this show, Mr. Malcolm Cates with the Hampton Roads Connector Partners. He works directly with public and private sector leaders to achieve historic accomplishments in diversity, small business growth, and economic development. As an expert in the Federal Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program, better known as DBE, and as compliance manager for the $3.3 billion Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel Expansion Project, Malcolm is responsible for ensuring the project team meets its robust small business participation and compliance goals. Welcome back, Malcolm. How are you? Thank you so much, Blair. It's thrilled to be back. Doing great. How about yourself? Doing awesome. Great to have you here. Can we just start with, kind of jumping right in, uh, an overview of the project itself, the Amphi Roads Bridge Tunnel Expansion Project, and then kind of an update as to where you all are now. I know when we talked, oh goodness, about a year ago, um, things are just getting underway, but there's been some exciting developments. So share with us. There absolutely have, and and I'd I'd love to talk about it. And very quickly, just want to say congratulations to you and to the Hampton Roads Regional Black Chamber on all of the great work that you're doing in Hampton Roads. And I'm very much looking forward to Black Diamond Weekend myself. Yes, we're definitely going to talk about that, uh, that opportunity. I'm excited. Thank you. Absolutely. So, you know, if there's one thing that we've learned over the last year, and particularly the last eight months or so, Blair, it's that, and I think this applies to everybody, yeah. we're very fortunate, right? Um, a lot of things have changed, but even to be here right now, I think we're all very fortunate. And we're particularly fortunate as it relates to the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel Expansion Project, which, as you mentioned, is one of the largest, uh, if not the largest, uh, transportation infrastructure project to ever come to Virginia uh, because it's still proceeding. Um, A lot of construction projects across the country have, you know, either paused or stopped altogether. Uh, But thanks to the leadership in Virginia, particularly uh, Governor Northam, Secretary uh, of Transportation, Shannon Valentine, uh, civil rights leadership with Sandra Norman, uh, as well as our project leadership, Jim Utterback and uh, Jose Martin, uh, we're very fortunate to, to, to keep moving forward and to have lots of opportunities for small businesses to be involved. Hmm. Fantastic. I'm excited. Super excited. So I got to ask you this question. Um, We talked a little bit about it just before the show started. For those that may not be familiar, how is the bridge tunnel actually being expanded? What what all is going to be taking place with this project? That's a great question. So when you talk about a project of this size, there are a few different ways to build a project like this. Um, you may hear, if you're familiar with con- the construction industry, uh, a, a model called the public-private partnership, which includes a lot of private financing from, you know, uh, large investors in the private sector. That's not being done on this one. This one's being built more traditionally in a fashion called design-build. And with a design-build project, it's exactly as it sounds for really the first you know, we've, we've, we were awarded the contract in April of 2019, and for the entire first year and a half of the project, we've been in, in the design phase, so no actual shovels in the ground or work being done, but just designing how we're going to do this thing. Yeah. Um, and as of September 11th um, of this year, we uh, received our notice to proceed with construction, uh, so... Just a few weeks ago, we, you know, uh, started the actual construction of the project. And to answer your question, <clears throat> what we're looking at is a complete all overhaul of the HRBT. 
Oh. So if you're... I know. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long time coming. Um, but wow. if you're familiar with the HRBT, you know, there's there's highway lanes leading up to the trestle bridges, mm-hmm. uh, with, whether you're coming from Norfolk or from Hampton. Uh, so we're going to expand to those highway lanes leading up to the bridge tunnel. Then once you actually approach those trestle bridges, we're going to um, demolish the existing ones and build much wider, much mm. bigger bridges. Uh, we're going to expand both of those man-made islands that you uh, approach as you lead into the tunnels. Yeah. And then as, as kind of the biggest um, part of the construction, what we're going to be doing is boring two brand new tunnels just west of where the existing uh, two tunnels are for a total of four. Uh This will be the only the fourth board tunnel project in the U.S. And by by the way, interrupt me at any time because I can talk about this forever. This is so Um, exciting. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, these will actually be the second largest tunnels in the U.S., these two new ones that we're we're going to be building. And how many lanes going in both directions? I believe it's eight total, so four on each side. Wow. So Um, we're going to add four lanes. Yes, yes. You're, You're basically going to double the capacity going both ways. Wow. And so what that means is much smoother, you know, travel to and from, uh, and it will make it much easier for everybody in the region. And it's a long project. It's five years. So while we just got the notice to proceed with construction, it's going to be for the next five years, including two of those years with the, with the board tunnels. Um, and, and while that's happening, you know, in terms of opportunities for, for small businesses to participate, it's going to involve every construction trade under the sun. Sure. Um, so whether you're a small business, um, you know, contractor that does paving or hauling, or even if you're just looking for a job, uh, we yeah. have on the job training opportunities. So you don't necessarily need to know a certain skill. We can help you learn the skills that you need to, to work on the project. Wow. Uh, and if you are skilled, great. We have opportunities uh, coming up for that, too. We really anticipate the, the largest lift of construction to take place, I'd say, at the end of this year, moving into the first quarter of 2021, you know, a real um, increase in terms of activity and hiring and contracting. Um, so for all of the above, our team, uh, Hampton Roads Connector Partners, uh, which is the prime contractor on the project, is committed to including minority and women uh, small business owners and minority women workforce every step of the way. Great. So great. We, we encourage anybody who's interested to, to connect with us. Yeah. Good good segue to the next question that I have written down, which is not the one that I really want to ask. What I really want to ask <laughs> is what is going to be the traffic impact <laughs> over the next <laughs> five years? I can only imagine I'm thinking about the expansion of 64 um, mm-hmm. right there in that corridor between Newport News and Williamsburg how massive that has been but the blessing that it is on the other side that you know it no longer bottlenecks there uh, but I can just imagine this is this is gonna this is gonna take some getting used to the work itself right sure yeah it's, yeah. it's you know it'll it'll get t- a little tougher before it gets better but the good news is uh, by contract we need to keep at least two lanes of traffic in each direction during the entire construction period. So there will be uh, there will, will be plenty of access even while we're doing the construction. But okay. but yes, we're looking forward to it being done too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good news. Well, if you've just tuned in, this is Blair Durham and Black Wall Street Today uh, talking now with Malcolm Cates uh, regarding his work with the Hampton Roads Connector Partners, uh, specifically as a compliance manager for the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel Expansion Project. And so, 
Give us an update with regard to uh, SWAM participation. I know that the state kind of prohibits what we'd like to see happen, uh, <laughs> but I know that you, you're doing some phenomenal work and you just released um, a publication that talks about the ways in which uh, contracts have been awarded to, to the SWAM business community. So would you share maybe a high-level overview of that? Absolutely. So... We have on this project, again, largest construction project to ever come to Virginia. Wow. Really, uh, in, you know, impactful small business goals. We have a, a 12% disadvantaged business enterprise or DBE goal on the project. Okay. And those are basically minority women-owned business enterprises um, certified by the federal government. And then we have a 20% SWAM goal which is Virginia's uh, small women and minority certification program. So big goals to meet in terms of small business participation. Yeah. And as our, as our product executive uh, says, Blair, we consider the goals the starting point. Sure. You know, what we've done is we've really established a culture um, organizationally uh, and project-wide that embraces and looks at every opportunity on the project first as a potential small business opportunity before we consider other contractors. So whether it's the boring of the tunnels or the, you know, um, uh, catering at our events, we always look to procure small businesses first, no matter the trade. Um, and so because of we've had that approach, even in just the design phase the last year and a half, <clears throat> we've already awarded over 171 uh, contracts, purchase orders, subconsultant agreements to DBE and SWAM businesses for over 89.3 million in awards. Wow! Um, and that's just the design phase. So, really, this is about construction, I, right? I, could you say that number again? Yes, yeah. <laughs> that was a big number. Yeah. Uh, hun- sure. Uh, 171. Uh, Executed, so these are signed agreements with BB and SWAM uh, firms uh, for over eighty nine point three million in awards. And, and Blair, without getting ahead of myself, we sure. expect a lot more even before the end of the year. A lot more. Okay, great. Um, so I'll keep you posted there. But but yes, this is again with just the design, you know, engineering. Um, roadway design, you know, things of that nature. We've been able to to make it that far, which is ahead of what we expected to be at this point. So we're very excited about that. And we're going to continue this approach throughout the life of the project, even after we've we've met and exceeded the goals that have been set for us. Mm. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm certainly uh, just excited to kind of learn about the direction things have gone in and and the fantastic work that you and team are doing to ensure um, participation, inclusion. Yeah. Um, What other kinds of events and activities, outreach and so forth, does Hampton Roads Connector Partners have on the horizon that we could share? That's a great question. So we, you know, it's imperative in terms of our success to partner with organizations like yours and participate in events like Black Diamond Weekend um, in order to to meet the businesses uh, that we want to meet to make this project a success. Um, And then we also produce our own, you know, in-house events. Uh, We actually just had our annual um, small business or DBE SWAM opportunity conference on October the 1st. And if you couldn't attend that, that's okay. We, we, it was held virtually. We have a, a full video available, and I'll be happy to, to share that link with you, Blair. Okay, great. Um, and in early February, we're going to be having our second annual bonding education program, or BEP, which is done in partnership with the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um, and what, what that program um, provides to small businesses interested really on the construction side, is access to information, resources, uh, and other um, supportive services, including um, Virginia's Business Opportunity and Workforce Development Center, or Bound Center, uh, to to get the bonding capacity that they need 
to, to work on a project like this. So, you know, we go beyond contract opportunities to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to help small businesses get from the idea phase to capable of working on a project like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huge. Wow, Malcolm, we are out of time. This show is brought to you by Positive Vibes Incorporated, our consulting services. We do credit fixes, tax resolution, we lend private money to real estate investors, and we do debt consolidations. Basically, we put money in your pocket when you need money. We put money in your pocket when you need money. 757-932-0177. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Hey, yo, when I say black, you say Wall Street. What? Black Wall Street. When I say black, you say Wall Street. What? What? When I say black, you say Wall Street. What? What? When I say black, you say Wall Street. What? What? Black Wall Street, Black Wall Street. Phenomenal. Phenomenal.